Hello everybody, so I'm getting a brew on today and I've been using the new Beersmith software, so Beersmith 3 for a while now, and I thought I'd just do a quick video on um, how I've been using the water tools within that software, as I think that's one of the most useful parts of the new new version of Beersmith. So let's get into it and have a quick chat about how I'm using it to work out my water profiles. <laughs> Right, so if you've been following some of the previous videos, you will have seen that I've recently started using RO water. Prior to that, uh, my existing tap water did need quite a lot of uh, treatment because it's fairly um, hard water, lots of bicarbonates in there and a fairly high mineral content generally. So I've gone through using quite a lot of the different software and um, web apps and things like that for water treatment. And uh, when I saw that Beersmith was incorporating the water tool into the actual kind of recipe design part of the software that uh, that sounded like a really good idea to me because one of the frustrating things with water treatment um, software is that you always have to kind of skip back and forth between um, the other software or spreadsheets and the recipe that you're actually working with so the main advantage for me with the Beersmith um, water tool is that it's now incorporated into the recipe so it's automatically bringing in all of the information from your recipe your grain bill um, water etc etc any additions that you're putting in and basically profiling off the base of that now I had just prior to Beersmith 3 coming out started getting into the brewing water spreadsheet which is absolutely comprehensive as far as um, water kind of profiling tools go that does everything and it's really good but it still has that issue that you've got to kind of copy across all the information for each brew into it and it just makes it a little bit more tedious but as far as things that kind of tell you all the information you need and give you the most options that's probably the best one that I've come across uh, so far once you can get to grips with it because it is a little bit overwhelming if you're not really sure what you're doing. Uh, prior to that I've also used the um, Graham Wheeler one on Jim's beer kit that is really simple and easy to use and also for uh, brewers in the UK uh, it's worked quite well with using CRS which is a common water treatment acid for us over here um, the brewers friend one I found to be quite good as well and uh, that's that's pretty much the main ones that I looked at but yeah I'm getting into the beer smith free um, water tool now and so far I'm actually finding it really easy to use and, and quite convenient as well compared to copying information across to to other packages so let's uh, yeah let's get into the software and I'll switch over to the screen recording and show you basically how I've been using it and how I use it for working out my water treatment okay so here we have the recipe that I'm going to be brewing today it is a American amber ale very much the sort of west coast style amber ale so quite a big um, hopping going into this uh, nice mixture of malt, so a malty hoppy amber ale, 5.4%, 36 IBUs and uh, 25 EBC which is pretty much in the middle of the colour range for that style. So as an amber beer it's uh, kind of in between in terms of water treatment, in terms of whether you want um, you know hoppiness or malts to come through, so I'll be going for a kind of balanced water profile with this and there's going to be some acidification coming from the crystal malts the darker crystal malts especially in that little addition of chocolate malt for color but it will probably need some um, additional acidification of the mash just to bring the pH down to a sensible level so let's go to the water tab so on Beersmith version 3 you now have a little tab for water in the recipe page itself and we can see here at the moment there's nothing there because we haven't added anything so what we need to do first of all is put in some water that we're going to use so in the water profile page here we're going to go over and click add water now at this point you can choose to add in any of these kind of profiles that are preset uh, one of which is distilled water so I'm going to be using that in lieu of um, basically reverse osmosis water. Some sources will say that reverse osmosis will have a very small mineral content but at the moment my TDS meter is still reading zero so 
Um, it should essentially be equivalent to distilled water. You've got various city water profiles, but they're not really going to be much use to you, to be honest. Um, even if you are living in those city, it's unlikely you're going to have that exact same water profile. But you can also create a new water profile. So down here, there's a tab for creating a water profile. And if we go back up to the top here, you can see I've actually added in... Um, where is it? There it is. So that's the Bedford water profile going by the averages on my water report from the water company that we've got there. So you can see there that's why I went to um, using reverse osmosis. The calcium, um, magnesium, sodium, sulfate and chloride is actually a reasonably decent sort of general purpose water profile. So that's quite a balanced water profile there. But it does have a lot of alkalinity so there is a um, fairly high bicarbonate level in there at 220 and that meant I was having to strip that out and if I was wanting to use that for anything a lot lighter then um, there's not much you can do about the mineral content in terms of these stripping them out so going back to distilled water we're going to use the full amount of distilled water one thing that's great about this water tool is if you're going to use a split batch of water so if you're going to put in say half and half tap water and distilled water you can enter the amount in this box and then add sort of half of each and it will then obviously divide up the mineral content depending on how much you've added of each one but we're going with a full batch of reverse osmosis water so at the moment it's coming up as zero 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 and we can now look at our salts that we need to add in order to hit a particular profile so we go down to the next box you've got water adjustment salts again there's nothing in there you can manually add stuff in if you want to so if you've got a standard sort of set of uh, water treatment that you would like to do for a particular type of beer just click there and add the salts and then it will tell you what your um, final water profile is going to look like or you can use this tool which I'm going to show you today which is match a target profile now there's a whole range of different profiles in here a lot of these have actually been as far as I can tell lifted straight out of the brewing water spreadsheet so those of you who are using brewing water you don't need to copy in um, loads of different profiles it's actually got a lot of the profiles that you'll find in there uh, I think I've looked at a few of them anyway and they seem to match up exactly to the brewing water ones and conveniently right at the top which is the one that I'm planning on using today is the amber balanced water profile now I'm not going to get into what the different uh, elements do for the flavor or um, you know yeast health and all the rest of it uh, I'm just gonna basically go with a kind of default profile for this so an amber balance profile which um, is a fairly yeah obviously good general purpose water profile for um, beers in the range of 7 to 17 SRM or roughly 14 to 34 um, EBC in terms of colour. So let's select that one. 50 ppm calcium, 10 magnesium, 15 sodium, sulfate, 75 chloride, 63 and 40 of bicarbonate. Once you've selected that, it's basically generating a series of mash additions and sparge additions to bring the water as it's been divided up by beer smith um, into the two different quantities up to that water profile so it should match it fairly closely it won't always be able to get there exactly so we can see here we've got 50.1 ppm after the suggested treatment 10 of magnesium sodium so it's pretty much bang on for all of them um, can't quite read the bicarbonate one but we'll click OK and you can see now that we've actually thrown in to that box a whole load of uh, different treatment salts that we can add and if we go back to the recipe page you can see those have all now been entered in as well as the water we've also got all the salts added for the different stages um, that you can add them in now one issue that I do have with this and perhaps you can change this but I haven't been able to figure this out myself yet uh, I usually basically treat all of the water together in one batch at the beginning rather than splitting it into separate uh, mash and sparge waters and then treating them separately especially when you're using RO water there's no real need 
as far as I'm concerned anyway, to split them up separately. So I will basically just add together the quantities for each one um, and add it all in one go to the water before I split it into mash and sparge liquor. But uh, it would be nice if in the software there was a button or something you can, or a checkbox just to say, um, you know, treat full volume of water together or, or combine mash and sparge treatment something like that but that's a minor gripe because um, it's fairly straightforward to add these together now looking at the profile as we've got it here as I said it's uh, thrown up this nice sort of fairly balanced profile um, pretty much mid-range for your kind of chloride and sulfates and stuff so it's not really favoring too much malts or hops in terms of the chloride sulfate balance which is fairly even um, as it says down the bottom there so it's telling you what your sulfate to chloride ratio is um, whether it's balanced or not and so on now one thing that I will do in terms of tweaking this treatment slightly is I'm not going to use any baking soda and um, I will explain why in a second that is basically what's going to be adding a lot of our um, bicarbonate and also a little bit of the sodium as well so I'm going to get rid of that so deleting both of those and you can see the bicarbonate is now back to zero and the sodiums actually come back to zero as well um, I will add in a little bit of table salt so let's go for a gram of table salt in the mash and we'll do the same for the sparge water so that's just slightly bumped up our sodium um, and the chloride has gone up slightly as well now I just put in a gram because it's a nice easy number to enter in and measure out but um, it's fairly close to what the target was for that profile anyway and now I don't need to use any bicarbonate. Now bicarbonate is primarily go in terms of the effect it has on the water going to basically create the residual um, alkalinity which will raise the pH so the reason that I've taken it out, the main reason I've taken it out is because if we look at the mash, so the adjusted mash pH is already a little bit higher than I want it so I'm, I'm actually uh, pretty close here and it would probably be fine now without any further acidification but as far as I'm concerned and please comment on this and correct me if you think I'm wrong but if your mash pH is fairly close to where you want it and the malts are not acidifying it um, too much then I don't really see any benefit in adding bicarbonate into the water profile um, from what I've read in the books and so on bicarbonate doesn't add much in terms of sort of flavor compound as a flavor ion or whatever um, certainly not in the same way that the others do so as far as I'm concerned calcium sulfate and chloride are kind of the key minerals and then your magnesium and sodium will have um, a bit of an effect on flavor as well but bicarbonate is primarily there in terms of balancing pH so as I said I've basically taken that out put some salt in instead to replace the sodium that we lost so we're just looking at um, additions of gypsum epsom salts calcium chloride and table salt and then the next part we need to look at as we've just seen is in the mash page checking where our pH is going to fall now without any treatment at the moment we're looking at about 5.5 which is okay that's within the sort of healthy range so 5.2 to 5.6 is suggested as the best option ideally as close to 5.2 as you can get it for very light beers and for darker beers you can be kind of up the other end so this would be a fairly decent starting point for something a bit darker maybe but for an amber beer I'd probably want to just maybe pop it you know try and keep it right in the middle of that range so I'm going to aim for um, 5.4 
Now, again, one minor gripe with this is it would have been good to have had access to the pH stuff on the water page because obviously that is affected by um, some of the minerals that we're adding in there and it would have been good to have that just pH box doubled up on that page as well So and acid additions possible from there too. Um, but it's literally just a case of switching over to this screen so it's not too big a deal. Now, if our target pH is 5.4, we can use this now to calculate what acid we need to add in. You can, again, manually add treatment acids and see what happens, but um, a quick way to do this is to use the measured mass pH, measured mash pH and put your target number in there, and then it will basically tell you how much acid you should add in order to hit that measurement. Now, um, if we do that, the idea for this was that you would be doing it on the fly, but you can also use it preemptively to work out what you need to add in. So, sorry, what we need to do is put in the same number um, for the predicted mash pH into the measured mash pH box. And as you can see, that has now thrown up a quantity of phosphoric acid. So, I'd already selected phosphoric acid. 75% concentration as the acid I'm going to use in the mash. You do have the options to choose either acid malt or lactic acid. Um, again for UK users it would have been good to have had CRS in there uh, and that's also one of the reasons why I would have liked to have seen it on the water treatment page because that would have affected the quantities of chloride and sulfate as well um, but maybe that's something that will get updated at some point. Anyway that's giving us 1.8 mils added to the mash so what I will do is, when I've separated the mash water and the sparge water, I will add 1.8 mils of phosphoric acid to the mash water prior to mashing, and then that should just drop our pH down to 5.4, um, which is nice, um, nicely in the middle of the suggested range and should work well for an amber beer. So that's it. That is the water treatment that we will be doing. We're going to be adding in... Um, a couple of grams of gypsum, a couple of grams of salt, about just over three grams of, or three point four grams of Epsom salts, and four point three grams of calcium chloride, uh, with that one point eight mils of phosphoric acid in the mash as well. So hopefully that's um, shown you that it's relatively easy to use this, and as I said. What I like about it is it's all integrated into your recipe page. So all of those quantities have now been added into the recipe so I can read everything off of a single um, window or sheet of paper if I print it out. Um, and it's all consolidated in one place. And you don't have to copy the information back and forth. So if I change something on here, it's automatically going to take that into account in terms of the recipe or the grist, etc. And I don't have to then copy that back out to another spreadsheet or piece of software later on. Anyway, let's go and measure out those um, minerals and actually give it a go and see, see how it goes in the brew. I'm the dude, so that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino. If